Good evening, everyone. My name is Pani Tan Chen Wong. I'm 16 years old, and today I'm going to be talking to you about a law in science that you most probably have not heard of. And although science may be seen as magnificent to some and colorless to others, I feel that this law captivates curiosity and appeal to both, and even to those in between, as its concepts truly surround our everyday lives, as it is not only a fundamental law in science, but also a fundamental law in nature. Now, one of the first things that we learn about in science class is something known as the, second, uh, the first law of thermodynamics, which states that the amount of energy in an isolated system is constant, as it cannot be created or destroyed. However, what we don't learn early on in science class is something known as the second law of thermodynamics, which does not speak about the amount of energy, but rather the, qu the quality of energy as this will be the topic that I hope to enlighten you with today. So let us begin with an activity. Here I have a set of cards. And what I'm going to do is basically draw out three cards. And if the three cards that I draw out have the same picture, such as three kings or three jacks or three threes, then let's call this an ordered set. However, if the three cards that I draw out do not, do not have the same picture, then let us call this a disordered set, such as a 2-2 two, two, and a 3, or a jack-jack and a king, or a jack-king and a queen. So here's the first set of cards. A 9, a 3, and a, an 8, which is, of course, a disordered set. And if we do this one more time, we get a 5, a 4, and a 10, again, a disordered set. And if we do this one more time, we get a queen, a jack, and a, an ace, which is, again, a disordered set. So based on what we have just seen, can anyone tell me if it is more common to draw out an ordered set or a disordered set? Anyone with their hand up? Disordered, correct. It is more common to draw out a disordered set. Now let's stop referring it to as sets, but rather refer it to as systems, ordered and disordered systems in nature to be precise. And the funny thing is, just like how it was more common to draw out a disordered system, speaks true for nature in the fact that there are more disordered systems in nature than ordered. And we call systems that are highly disordered as high entropy. And we call systems that have a low disorder as low entropy. And so how about we look at a real life example? Here I have a cup of ice cubes. Now, at the start of this talk, the water molecules that make up these ice cubes were in an ordered, well-defined, structured lattice. And they still are to some extent. However, without any interference, its natural tendency as time passes is for these water molecules to move towards a state of less order. And this is why we can see that the ice cubes are slowly turning into a liquid, hence the dripping. In other words, their, let's say, randomness increases, and so does their entropy, a term I'm about to explain. As what is happening inside this cup of ice cubes at this very moment illustrates the second law of thermodynamics in a nutshell, a movement towards this order. So, let's take a look at another example. Now, your mom might tell you to clean your room at home. However, my excuse for not doing so is the law of entropy. You see, your room will only keep getting messier and messier as your items will be placed in a more random way if you don't do anything about it. Just like the ice cubes, it will naturally move towards a state of less order. And what we see from both these situations, from both these systems, is that entropy in an isolated system will always increase over time, which is what the, thermod which is what the second law of thermodynamics states. But what is entropy? Well, in simple terms, entropy is the quantitative measure of this order in a system. And in even simpler terms, what the second law of thermodynamics states is that the purely natural tendency of things is to move towards chaos. 
and not order. And there are numerous formulas to calculate entropy. For example, this one looks at the change in entropy. This one is known as the Boltzmann formula of entropy, whereas this one looks at the entropy of a monoatomic ideal gas. Now, don't be scared if you don't understand any of this, because frankly, I don't either. So while the quantity of energy in an isolated system is constant, the quality of energy deteriorates over time. As entropy increases, the amount of energy available to perform work decreases. And this whole idea of entropy is one that provokes fear and admiration from scientists all around the world. Because why would any scientist want to quantify, want to measure a ghost-like concept that is impossible to see or touch? And how does this theme of the blind side possibly incorporate itself into this scientific phenomenon? Well, as previously mentioned, this law of entropy surrounds our everyday lives, as it is the reason that in nature, this turns into this. The reason that in nature, this turns into this. And maybe even one day, this will turn into this. You see, it is said that as time continually moves forward, all the available energy in the universe and in the, in, in, in the world will eventually turn into unavailable energy in terms of its ability to do work. And this is when the universe will cease to exist, also known as the heat death. Finally, if you haven't noticed it yet, here's how this whole talk links to the theme of the blind side. Although entropy is a measured quantity, it can never be centrally perceived by humans. We, can never, we can't see it, we can't feel it, we can't taste it, we can't hear it. But regardless of this, it has undeniably played a significant role in not just the life of a scientist, but in fact, in all of our lives. As it is, in my opinion, the quintessential law in nature that allows us to better understand the world that we live in. And if there is one thing that, that I want all of you to be able to take from today, is that I want all of you to be able to look at the world and realize this constant, natural, persistent movement towards disorder. Because perhaps in essence, it represents much more than just thermodynamics. Because maybe it is symbolic for the reason to why we as humanity move towards chaos and not order. Thank you. <laughs>